Okay, so now we're ready to remove the shell. Um, I'm gonna give you a tip right now. One of the things that uh, you wanna avoid is trying to lift one end up because it will cause the other end to jam. The tabs that come up from the frame, um, hold on. <coughs> Um, as you can see, I've got a frame from another locomotive, and this is a, uh, another project. But they've got these little wells, and the tips from the shell sit down in. And so if you try and lift, you can actually cause a bind at one other end, and you can actually cause these to uh, snap or crack, um, and not good. So... Um, what you want to do is just you know look, grab at both ends and just lift straight up and just rotate it back is what I like to do and so there we go and uh, now uh, we can start basically taking stuff out and getting ready uh, for the dip so uh, we're gonna be stripping this locomotive down cleaning it up um, first things I like to do is we're gonna take the radiator fans out and just toss those in the dip and I'm just putting these in my pickle jar I've got right behind here really easy to pull those small parts out and then the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna start taking all the electronics out for this locomotive there's not much electronics are gonna go back in down here uh, I'll leave the number board lights and uh, whatnot but most likely uh, I will install LED headlights instead of the incandescent bulbs that are here and I'll be taking out the smoke unit I'll be taking out this main board um, because I'm gonna want my revolution to have somewhere to sit um, also, as we work, we're, I like to take these twist ties, and every time you come to one, just go ahead and take it off, because we're going to have to get all these wires loose from each other to get it out. Uh, I don't run smoke units in my locomotives. Um, I've just never had an awesome experience with it for it to be justifiable. And I've actually had some pretty just miserable experiences where, you know, my oldest son put too much uh, smoke fluid in. It actually, you know, overflowed, got on the tracks. And the, uh, God, that main line, I, I it took, it, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it, it felt like it took forever to get it clean so that the engines weren't slipping um, going up the hill and so you know that pretty much just killed it that was the the dagger and now if you're doing a air wire drop in or an air wire wire up um, you know this process is actually gonna be really similar uh, you'll actually take this board out and the only thing you'll do is you'll need to put the air wire board in here and then you'll reconnect the wires uh, from the front, the cab and whatnot. You'll connect that to the air wire board um, and you'll connect the smoke unit in a way. Uh, I've done several of those for friends, for friends and whatnot. Uh, and then probably the hardest part on the air wire install is just, um, you know, running, you know, either putting your battery in the engine or running your trailing wire, you know, just making sure it's all in there and secure. Or if you do the trailing, uh, you know, make, you know, having to, you might have to drill a small hole back here or up here, or however you want to wire it. So there we go. And then, so we'll take this out. I keep a, a large tub of these parts and so you know as I take them out um, you know I'll put this in a tub with other USA trains boards and so we'll take the smoke unit out I'm 
guessing I'll probably just like fast forward when I edit this and so you'll just watch it at like twice the normal speed and, and I'll probably sound like Alvin while I'm talking. Now as far as these smoke units, um, I take these out um, and I try to just give them away to people or sometimes people offer me money for them and I'll take whatever they want. Um, but it, it, the, you know, and especially these, these are the fan powered. Um, I don't have a non one floating on my workbench, but uh, they're typically a cream plastic color square and they don't have a motor to blow. Um, this is, uh, it's got a little fan right here and you got your smoke unit and it actually blows air so it blows the smoke up. Um, but I've got another tub where I put all my smoke units and so if somebody needs one, they call me up. So we're gonna take these out. As of right now, the main shell is disconnected from this. I'm gonna finish this first. I'm gonna take the weights out. And again, just lift these straight up. And we're gonna put these over in my tub. I try to stick them over in a corner. And uh, now we're gonna release the motor blocks. I'm gonna pull this screw. Pull this screw. Um, I'm also gonna take this screw off down here at the end. This is gonna release this little wire of the centering wire for the USA trains coupler. Uh, when I put the Katie coupler on here, it's got its own. And then, so I'm very carefully gonna pull my wires through, pull my wires through. And now, um, I'm gonna push this up through and use a pair of pliers. And yank it out. Okay, and so I yank that out, stick it off the side, and this is ready to go in the dip. Um, and I've got some little rough parts down here. Once everything's stripped off, the alcohol, uh, depending on the glue, sometimes the alcohol might soften this glue, sometimes it won't. Um, so we'll, oh, we've got this, and I can see underneath I've got some glue spots, so I'm just gonna very carefully, and whatever glue they use wasn't very good. Um, so that just slid right out and so let's try this end that didn't do anything so let's just oop, and yeah my tabs came off beautifully and then I, I bumped this when it came off the tabs are still fine so that's good <coughs> all right so we're gonna put this in the dip here in just a minute um, I do want to take out these two screws uh, before I go too far because those air tanks earlier were bumped and they just sheared right off. So, so that one came out. So I got my two screws. And then I'm just going to take my screwdriver, tap it out. And so now we'll look at it. Um, I'm just doing a quick look to make sure there's no cracks. I'm actually going to twist it just a little bit. Um, and, you know, I'm looking for any cracks, um, any steps missing or any steps that are loose. The steps, uh, this bottom step glues in and whatnot, so looking for that. I'm looking for cracks around here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to look in my holes. And, you know, typically what I do, I just take my screwdriver and I'm just trying to push out my screws. Because what I don't want is to put this in the dip and the screws are still in here and then the screws fall out in my giant tub of dip and then yeah <laughs> and they, they won't get found until the end of the month when i clean it up so now this part's ready to go in the dip so so far we've got uh the frame is ready i've got my dynamic brake uh, we're gonna dip the air tanks got my fuel tank and i'll show you the tub of dip here in just a minute the next thing we're gonna do um is for now, right now, um, 
you know, I'm still going to get this finished. So I'm going to put the motor blocks over in my tub. <clears throat> this way they do, they stay out of the dust. It's pollen season here in Atlanta. So um, before I pull this back, you're going to see, you know, especially if you're watching this in HD, you're going to see a whole bunch of screws. And so I'm going to do a quick feel. Got a couple that ended up down here. Um, if the fuel tank is black, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just put the screws, since I'm not stripping the fuel tank, I'll put the screws in the fuel tank. Um, and so I'm looking for any other screws that may, I'm looking for, I've got a couple in here. The ones that I take out of the, uh, yeah, the smoke units, um, I'll still throw in the tub, and then once I get to the end, uh, I will sort those I've actually have a large tub of just screws that I keep and sort it out so all right so we're gonna do this uh, this was the part that we're coming up to next uh, was something a couple people were asking me how do I get stuff out without breaking it and I don't <laughs> I, I get stuff, I have stuff break on me just as much. Now, um, I'm still going to use some of those same tools to help. And so I'm going to reach in, I'm going to grab some of these screws. And I'm also looking uh, down in there. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this back and I'm tilting it at a back angle because there's two uh, two LEDs and so once I tilt it at an angle then I'm going to lift it straight up and then I can lift it back behind these little posts here. Uh, the next part is these uh, and very simply you know I just take my fingers and boom. Uh, you saw that it just popped right out. I just applied a little bit of pressure to the middle and Honestly, probably 75% of the time they'll do that um, The next part we're going to do is uh, the Headlights here and so I'm just going to take a small flathead screwdriver and just very carefully push and As you can see it all just fell right out um, Yeah, the whole thing just fell right out uh, so we'll very carefully now this will not go in the dip uh, the plastic the alcohol will soften this and and it can damage it um, so what we'll do is when we get to the new number boards uh, I'll show you what we do there this part um, I'm just gonna set in the tub for now so it's out of the way uh, turn my attention to the other end where I've already so I'm going to slide it back, tilt it, and then slide it up and over. And then again, let's see. So I'm just going to push right. Ah, now this time you saw it didn't budge. So I pushed in the middle. Then I came down here and it was nice and loose. So I just pushed gently and then I came back up here, pushed. And as soon as I pushed up here, the whole thing just fell right out. So I'm going to reach in. Now, if they don't do that, I'll be honest, I was lucky. Um, if they don't do that, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll just take my screwdriver and I'll just push gently and put and just just apply force around it repeatedly. If that doesn't work and they still don't want to come out, um, another option is to put it in your freezer. Uh, let it sit for several hours so it freezes. And then when you get it out, use a hair dryer on hot to warm it up. And that quick change in temperature will cause the plastic and the acrylic, I don't, whatever the plastic is for the number boards, they will they expand and contract at different rates from each other. So the, the cooling and the warming, and they, so I've had them where literally, you know, a couple of passes with the hair dryer and pop, they just fall right out and I don't even touch them. Um, you know, you try not to hammer at them uh, because that will, that will just cause this material to shatter. Um, also note, you know, the orientation. Uh, if this is your first time, you might want to put, you know, bottom, take a little Sharpie and write bottom. 
um, because I'll admit the first time I did one of these uh, I actually put the numbers upside down uh, for whatever reason I thought it went like this because um, once I stripped the numbers off I lost my orientation and so you know thank goodness uh, I had some extra decals because I had to get mm, yeah so we'll set those off to the side uh, we'll move this over here the next part is you can go ahead and slide these are the little dividers uh, I don't strip these typically so uh, the next part we're going to take is the cab there's four tabs that snap the cab to the battery boxes so if we can just do something like this and basically what trying to do is just slide it back and push it down just a little bit to free the cab from the battery boxes and we want to do it very carefully because we don't want to lose these tabs um, it's not life or death but we will have to do some different things when we put the locomotive back together because we won't get a really nice tight seam here uh, so the next thing we're going to do is very carefully just lift the cab right up and boom uh, there's this little spring I always forget to remove it beforehand all right so now we've got our engineer and so we're gonna take this guy there's two screws here and we're gonna take those two out this will release the cab interior from and again we're just going to go straight up there's little pins here so again you want to go straight up um, the nice thing is these uh, pins when we put this locomotive back together uh, I'm going to have it uh, long hood board which is what the southern ran and the great thing is is USA trains put the pins on the other side so I can just rotate it drop the pins in the screw holes line up and now it's set to run long hood for it um, so now I'm gonna put this in my tub uh, these are ready to go in the dip I'm gonna take this was to hold some wires down so we we'll take these out those are ready to go in the dip uh, I'm gonna double check my frame and make sure I don't have anything here okay and sometimes I will I'll, I'll take this since these popped right out I'm gonna grab this and just wiggle it a little bit and it's not wiggling so I'm just gonna leave it alone if it sometimes it will come off sometimes it won't um, if it comes out it comes out I for painting this locomotive uh, it really helps to remove it so uh, up under here there's the pins and so I'm actually resting the locomotive shell on my shoulder and then I'm just gonna just push this flat and see if I can get it out if not right now after it comes after I take it out of the dip I'll try it again it's pretty snug right now I'm not gonna mess with it so this is ready to go in the dip and we are down to this and the last thing we need to do here is take a, take out all of the windows and as you can see one of the windows already popped out I didn't even do anything so the first step we're gonna remove the light and this is just two simple screws and we'll put those over here again lift straight up because there's those wells for the tabs to go in and so we'll put that over there all right now we're gonna just work on the windows and we've got two windows over here two windows over here we've got uh, four total windows uh, I just push with my thumb and they popped right out I've got this one that is being a little stubborn. It doesn't want to come out. And I'm just using my finger and pushing a little bit. And I was watching the glue separate. And so I felt really comfortable just about pushing it out. If that wouldn't have worked, um, I would have brought this uh, little tool in. And I just would have worked around 
the edges really carefully and just it would have come up um, for these the first thing I'm going to try is just wiggle it back and forth and down um, so what I'm trying to do is just wiggle it back and forth sometimes they're glued in sometimes they're not um, so in this case we're just going to lift it up a little bit and basically just trying to get it to separate from the glue and then this little guy as you can see it will just slide right out the windows will slide right out and in the tub windows all four in the tub we come over here and since that first one was a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and just work my piece in there I could actually hear it a little bit a little piece slides right out my windows slide out now we're ready for the dip um, now there's one thing left on the cab that I do want to take a look at real quick um, I noticed and I've got my sun visor over here this one is broken off when I got it um, so I'm gonna use a little um, screwdriver and I'm gonna just try and work in and just work it back and forth and push the tab and here we go so now I've got that tab and I've got that tab so now my holes are opened up over here um, I know where the tabs are they're here and here and so I'm gonna work this in and as you can see the tabs I didn't break them they just slid right out and at this point you know we're ready for the dip all right well uh, here we are I've got my tub of dip and this is just 91% rubbing alcohol um, I would guess this is probably at least six gallons of it now um, I keep a lid on it when I'm not using it and you know this has been goodness for two years now so <clears throat> I do add to it um, just because as you're taking stuff out you're gonna drip and yeah so uh, we're gonna be dropping and we just start I try to put the small pieces around the edges and we've got our goodbye Santa Fe and we got a couple other little pieces in here we'll have to work around we've got a uh, oh yeah I forgot about the switch engine <laughs> uh, we've got a RS3 cab another RS3 cab oh, there's a Penzi. And as you can see, the dip just. I'm just using my thumb. And this has been soaking for a few days. And the paint just comes right off. And the best thing is, it's not hurting my hands. It's not toxic. It's not greasy. It's not thick. It's a very, you know, very fluid. So it gets down in crevices. It doesn't hurt the glue. So now we're going to put our locomotive shell. This is always, and I've got multiple projects in the dip tank. Stay. A little bit of working, and it'll eventually settle. Alright, so we'll put that, we'll put the cab, alright, and so there we go. And so now the locomotive is in the dip. We'll come back tomorrow, 24 hours. Um, I found with these Santa Fe engines, the silver and the red start coming off within an hour or two. Um, but I'm just gonna let it sit overnight. It makes it easier that way. And while this is dipping, I'm gonna go over and take it up, take a look at the motor blocks and open those up.